Last episode, I jokingly mentioned failing financial fair play in the Champions League, and it was all very ha-ha, very, you know, joking around. Now I am actually starting to worry. Our bank balance sits at negative £466 million. Pounds. Our financial status is insecure. And yeah, I, I am actually worried. Am I going to be forced into a situation where I'm just having to sell a load of players in the summer just to stay afloat? Maybe the football manager gods are trying to predict what's going to happen to Chelsea in real life. It's not something I really want to have to worry about. Mostly because today we've actually got two really difficult games. Aston Villa away from home. They're fifth, we're fourth. There is only one point separating us with four games left of the year. And then after that, we're at home against Arsenal, who again, very good team, medium prediction of third, currently in third. They are still in the Champions League as well. They've made it all the way to the semi-final. It's tough opposition. And these are definitely games that if we don't win today, we won't get Champions League football then we really could be in trouble. So with that all said and done, we're going to try and remain calm. I'm going to catch you up on what's happened since you last here, and we are going to secure some dubs, as I believe the kids would say. I don't know. Dubs, is that right? No idea. Run the intro. How is it going, folks? Welcome back to episode number six of our Chelsea Let's Play here in FM24. I hope you guys are doing amazing. I want to just say a massive thank you for the support on the series. It's been overwhelming. It's good to see people really getting into things, really buying into the idea that Giroud could win the Golden Boot Award. Some bad news. He won't win it this year. We already knew this. He is second in the top goal scoring charts. He's actually got two hat tricks since we last here, but Erling Haaland is just better sadly. Now, speaking of games since we last year, we've played five games all in the league. Of course, slightly uncharacteristic, I suppose. We've been knocked out of all the cup competitions early. There's been no European football to worry about. So as a result of that, the fixture schedules felt remarkably calm. You know, if you've ever done a Premier League save or a top European save and you look at your fixtures, what we'll use Arsenal as the example here, it just feels a lot more stressful with all the extra games. We've not had that stress to worry about. In spite of that, though, it's not been perfect since you were last here. We drew against Brighton, which after the Man City nil-nil draw was a bit of a concern. Two games without scoring, only silver lining, Bazunu kept a clean sheet. And, well, speaking of Bazunu clean sheets, he kept a clean sheet in the very next game. We beat Everton 3-0. He kept four clean sheets in a row. Yeah, I know. I can't believe it either. He's been in some good form. He's been training well. I'm almost starting to become attached to him in an unhealthy way. After that emphatic Everton 3-0 win, we took on Luton. I expected more of the same. It didn't quite play out exactly as I expected, but there were plenty of goals in this one. Giroud got a hat-trick, as I already mentioned. Gula also had a really good game. The Turkish international, looking like a phenomenal prospect for the future. He chipped in with a brace, but he was ultimately overshadowed by Giroud's performance. Uh, of the seven goals in this game, by the way, Six in the first half. They responded immediately after we grabbed our second with a goal to peg us back. And at 2-1, I did start to panic a little bit. And yet, there'd be three more goals before half-time. Gula smashed in a free kick. We brought him in for his set-piece wizardry. He got involved in that. We then conceded a corner. I feel like if there was a drinking game for this Chelsea save game, conceding set pieces would be one of the things to drink to. It happens far too often for us. To end the half, though, we did get another goal. It was Gula with his second of the game. And as already mentioned, Giroud did get a hat-trick in this game. It was towards the death of things. It was a much calmer second half. But ultimately, we did get the win against Luton. Not quite how I imagined we'd get it done but it's three points. After that Luton game, another game that I'd earmark as winnable. West Ham away from home. Knew it'd be tricky. Bazunu was in goal for this one. He had a Bazunu kind of game. We went down and Kunku did score from the penalty spot, but to be honest, that was the only real chance of note we had in the entire game. West Ham were very, very good defensively and having got two goals ahead at the end of the first half, in the second half, we really tried to go for things and it just, to be frank, it didn't really work out. We couldn't find a way through. They were defensively great. Bazunu didn't even really have a bad game, but I, I dropped him off the back of this. I needed a scapegoat. He was the full guy. And with us bringing Dean Henderson back into the first team as he recovered from injury, coincidentally, we got another really good win. Similar to the Luton game, we scored five goals. We only conceded one on this occasion, which was nice. Olivier Giroud picked up another hat trick. Yeah, his form recently has been rather good. He's now got 21 league goals in 30 league games, five assists. He's probably going to win our Player of the Season award. I really was mocked for signing this guy, and potentially rightfully so in some ways, but 
I, I don't know. You can't really knock his contributions, can you, this year? Speaking of players contributing this year, just to look at some of the team stats, Mason Mount and Kai Havertz are currently the second and third highest goal scorers in our team. In terms of the actual average ratings, Raheem Sterling leads the way with Giroud. Gula, who is getting more and more game time as of late, is continuing to impress. The 19-year-old improving a ton has been tearing it up for the under-21s. When we've given him first-team football, he's shone. I do feel like over the course of the coming summer, I need to move out some players so that players like this guy can get game time. Now, one player who I talked about last episode, and really it was a bit of a side note, he should have got more of a shout out. We signed him in January, Victor Roque. Now, he's not got off to the perfect start, but hear me out. I feel like today against Aston Villa, I should start him. And if you're sat wondering, Jack, what justification do you have for starting him? None. I just have a feeling. Do you ever have a feeling when you're playing football manager, there's like a team selection decision you make that, you know, it doesn't really make any sense, but you should feel like you should do it. This guy, I don't know why, the, the, the football manager senses, the spirit world of football manager is telling me, play him on the right as an inside forward, and he's going to do well today. I mean, look, tribute-wise, he should do well in this area. Now, our opposition today are an Aston Villa team with a media prediction of ninth, and yet they are currently fifth in the Premier League, one point behind us. They really are battling for Champions League football. In terms of their team, Emiliano Martinez is, of course, the key man, the World Cup winner, very, very good goalkeeper and football manager. In fact, you can see here he has kept eight clean sheets in 29 games nine clean sheets in the conference league which unfortunately for us Villa have been knocked out of so they don't really have any distractions going into this game against us now it is worth noting that in game despite the fact that the top four teams are indicated to get Champions League football there is a very very good chance that fifth place will also get Champions League football as part of the upcoming changes to European football with the Champions League restructuring the top two leagues in Europe actually get an extra spot in the Champions League that said for the sake of my own mental and remaining calm, I do still want to finish top four this year. A win against Aston Villa could build us a cushion, and then maybe in our second game today, we can try and hunt down Arsenal by beating them. There is one injury to speak of. Ben Chilwell, unfortunately, has picked up a little bit of an injury, so unavailable for today's game. In some other positive injury news, positive and negative, Wesley Fofana. He's back from the injury that's ruled him out for the vast majority of this season. Bad news. Forgot to register him. Can't register him now. So, uh, yeah, we'll have him next season. If I'd known he was going to be fit, I would have registered him, I swear. Okay, Victor Roque is on the pitch out on that right-hand side. We'll keep an eye on him, the youngster. I feel like I've really thrown him into the spotlight. So let, let's hope he knows how to act. In terms of their team, they're playing a 4-2-4. Now, 4 2 is very fun in Football Manager for goals, but traditionally can leave you in a little overrun in the midfield. We're going to hope that works out here as Victor Roque, he's cutting inside... And for a moment, I thought he was going to score. I just I could see his name up in lights. Unfortunately, the keeper saves. Halfway through the first half, the only shot on target of this game has been that Victor Roque got, attempt. It's not been a classic, and now they've got a set piece. Luca Dean whips it in. We head it away, but Tyro Mings keeps it alive. Jacob Ramsey hits it on his left foot. And that was a highlight. That, that, that's football manager getting bored. It feels like it needs to show me something. That was not a highlight-worthy chance. Aston Villa are starting to come into this game a little bit. They're knocking it around here. There's some space on the near side if Kamara can pick out Malcolm, the young Brazilian. I say young Brazilian. He's not young anymore. Archer is a young player. Cameron Archer, he's left Villa in real life. In this universe, he's still here. And he's found the back of the net. Aston Villa playing the ball from one side of the pitch to the other. As I mentioned, that 4-2-4 shape is a very fun attacking shape in Football Manager. And unfortunately there... We couldn't contain it. I was a little bit worried about Cucurella at left back coming in for Chilwell. He's not as good defensively. Maybe got exposed a tad there. The XG story kind of indicates what I already knew. We started off this game better. Villa just grew into the game as it went on. At half time, gonna get shouty shouty. Gonna tell the players they've been terrible. It's weird, right? From a statistical point of view, we've just not really had enough of the ball. We've created a little bit, but as the half went on... They were the better team. I'm going to ask our players to play more direct and pass it into space. And in transition, we're going to look to spread the play wide. I would love to try and get some overlaps happening in the wide area. I feel like exposing the wide areas, especially their inverted wing back and inverted fullback, it could be the play. Now, I'm not conceding defeat here, but I am subbing off it to Roque, so maybe I am conceding defeat. Ansu Fati is going to come on. Tammy Abraham's going to come on as well. He did get a couple of goals when he first came back into the first team. Giroud got injured. Tammy stopped scoring then. Giroud got fit. He went into the starting 11. But Tammy, 
I need you to come good today, mate. I've spent 25 million on you. I need goals. Elsewhere, I am going to bring in Mudrick for Raheem Sterling, who's not had the best of games. Somewhat concerned about the amount of bookings we have at the back. I'm going to change Chalibur to come in for Reese James. I'm going to play him as a wing back as well, just to keep things safe. But with half an hour left here, we need to create more. We've not done enough of that in this game. 15 minutes left of this game. Both teams have had 11 shots. Our XGs are very, very close to one another. And yet, we're just not seeing any highlights. I've got to go on attack. I've got to really throw some more men forward here. Going to get Cucurella on wing back on attack. Chalibur can go on to wing back on attack as well. Mason Mount, you move forward. Casado. Just act as a little bit of a shield in front of everything else going on. We have to gamble now, don't we? We, we have to make something happen. And Kunku off, Kai Havertz on. We have made a habit of scoring late goals. I need a late goal here. But as we throw men forward, we are going to leave ourselves exposed at the back. This is a game that would see Aston Villa move ahead of us into fourth. A draw here would maintain our one-point gap over them. I feel like that has to be the aim at this point. But really, maybe I need to worry about us defensively because they're carving us open... Dean Henderson makes a fantastic save to tip it over. It could have gone from bad to worse there. We still have a corner to deal with here. There's plenty of men back for us. And yeah, I mean, they're time wasting. Can you, they're time wasting. Villa, you're pathetic. Never have I been rattled by time wasting in a video game. Here we are. It's offside. Well done, Alex Moreno. What a waste of time. Four minutes of added time. Is there going to be a late twist? Can anything happen? No. No, it can't. I mean, if you look at the word anticlimactic in the dictionary, you get this scoreline. So with this, I know that Aston Villa have now gone ahead of us. I'm now thinking, did Arsenal play? Yeah, they did. They beat Nottingham Forest 2-0. Elsewhere, by the way, Manchester United beat Brighton 5-4. And so with that, they are now only four points behind us. So yeah, even if top five do get Champions League football, top five isn't even guaranteed. Our next game is against Arsenal. On the final day of the season, we take on Newcastle as well. Oh, I'm stressed. Levi Colwell thinks he's underpaid. You think after a lot of performance, this is the right time to come with this request? We're actually broke, mate. Genuinely, cannot afford it at the moment. Okay, that went well. Okay, Arsenal at home. We need to beat Mikel Arteta's men. Last time we met them, we lost 2-1. I hope we do better this time. I, I really need us to do better. Okay, it's been a week. I've just hit continue and then hit start record just to get to the start of our game, which is the later kickoff. Aston Villa have just lost to Crystal Palace 4-1. That makes the fact I've lost Aston Villa feel even worse. What it does mean is, if I win this next game against Arsenal, we can move back into the top four. And you know what? The bad news doesn't end there because we've had a cash injection. Todd has very kindly injected four million pounds. For four million pounds to save the club from receivership. Uh, just as a reminder, we're currently negative 475 million pounds in the bank. So quite how four million pounds helps. I, I don't know. We could actually end up in administration for next season. I don't know if that's disastrous or hilarious or fun or maybe all three. But alas, we are going to focus on the task at hand and what we can control. Vitor Oke is not in the style 11 today. He's going off. Madueke, you're going to get the start kitting in on your left foot. And Sufati, minor injury picked up during the week. Elsewhere, Chilwell is back fit and ready and raring to go. So we're going to bring him into the team. Cucurella moves down to the bench. Do I want to make any other changes? There is a temptation to bring in Bazunu, and I don't know why, but it's just me being silly. In this save game, by the way, Odegaard has been immense. I mean, he's ridiculous in Football Manager. Look at him. He's got 14 assists and 13 goals for them. And their second kind of most assist player is Milinkovic Savic, who between him... Odegaard and Saka. I mean, look at the goals and assists they've got this year. Gabriel Jesus has been scoring for fun. Martinelli's been getting a load. The last game was 1-0 against Villa. I'm expecting a lot more goals in this game here. It's going to be a bit of a test for our defence. Maybe it's a good job that I am being sensible and keeping Henderson in goal because... Yeah, this could be... I don't want to say it's going to be ugly. It's going to be tough. Apparently, Ten Hag has been spotted in the stands. Did you see that? The little text at the bottom. What's he doing here? I hope he's not trying to poach any of our players. Imagine if in the summer he's just going to steal all of them. I hope not. Giroud! I thought he was going to score against his former club. He might still get a chance here. Madueke pulls the trigger. 
I mean, look, he's not found the back of the net. At least we've looked attacking to start the game. We've got another corner. We almost scored from the first. Could we score from the second? And Kunku, near post, Giroud, goal number 24 of the season. We'll just say respect to Giroud. Didn't actually celebrate there in 3D against his former club. It's one of those weird things that football manager does actually have as a feature. I say that. He, he, he was doing more fist bumping in the replay than I remembered seeing prior. Anyway, we've got a goal up. Could we get another goal here? We're on the attack again. Madueke, I've brought him in. The football manager spirits told me he was the man to play out on the right-hand side. He plays inside to Giroud, mounts there. His shot deflects wide. Okay, we're set up for the short corner routine. I don't think we've scored a goal from it all year. This would be a good time to do... To do it. To... Mm. Why even show me that? Half an hour played it. Arsenal have had 59% of the ball, but in spite of that, no shots on target. Which, with the quality of their team, I think is just a compliment to our defence. We've looked good in this game. We've looked competent in this game. And, well, we need to continue that trend. We need to continue looking good as Arsenal knock the ball around at the back, tap sober inside to Granit Xhaka, played forward now towards Ben White, who's going to run back towards his own goal. We are pressing with our front four here, trying to force a turnover in possession in a dangerous area. Arsenal, to be honest, look more than capable of playing out from this press, and it's now Zinchenko inside, Martinelli, Jesus, lovely build-up play, Milinkovic-Savic chests it down and scores his 13th, no, 14th of the season. I'm so boomed by that goal, I've unlearnt how to read numbers. I'm not sure the term unlearnt how to read numbers is necessarily how to describe what I've just done there. I just can't read what's on my screen. I'm fuming, I'm just seeing red right now, and it's just anger. There's 30 seconds left of the half. I was getting ready to say, well, at least we've made it into half-time unscathed after they've scored. I mean, if we score here, it'd be in biblical Giroud. Tries to play it back to Rhys James. They've now got a chance. Rhys James is out of position. Martinelli's got in behind. There's players queuing up in the middle. Fabio Vieira is one of them. It's 2-1. It's 2-1. It's that is their second shot on target of the game. I should have started Bazunu. I should have started Bazunu. We lost the ball in a dangerous area. And from there, to be honest, they just sprang the counter-attack. Martinelli pulled it back. Fabio Vieira with a bit too much time and space. Henderson... Couldn't get down to it. You've been terrible so far. Sort it out. I was very tempted to throw a water bottle. I'm scared it would upset the players. Okay, you know what? Second half. Let's go into this map bit with a, a fresh mind, a fresh outlook on life. Reese James, give me a reason to have a fresh outlook. That is a jumpy in tackle by Fabio Vieira. He scored just before halftime. He could be making a very long walk because Reese James is in a crumpled heap on the floor. A flash of red is shown. Martinelli's subbed off. Odegaard's brought on. They're down a man. Now we have to make this count. Okay, Madueke has actually got injured from that tackle. So I'm going to take him off. I'm going to bring in Mudrick, who I'm going to bring on to play as a winger. Elsewhere, I think now with them being down a man, I need to just try and make this pitch as wide as possible. So I'm going to tell the players to focus the play down those wide areas. Going to up the tempo just a little bit and look to run at the defence more. And in transition, I don't want to change too much too soon. Let's just try and get it into the wide areas a little bit quicker and get on the front foot. Casado, everyone else around you is running forward now. You need to be the man who stays at home and defends. Okay, Arsenal were undeservedly ahead in this game, I feel like, based on the, the way the game had been playing out. They're now down a man. We have to make something happen here. They're down a player who's now, well, no longer marking the short corner. Could we make something happen? I talked about this routine not providing a goal yet. Could it change here? Gomez, Mudrick, Giroud's there. Giroud scores. VAR is going to be consulted. I hate VAR. Giroud might have got us back in this game. It was lovely build-up play. Our players seem very confident in their celebrations. Is it going to count? It is going to count. I can't believe it. The short corners actually worked. I was getting ready to remove it after this game. I'm not sure if it really technically worked, but it came as a result of the corner. It's found Giroud at the back post. There's an hour played here. It's 2-2. Game on. Sterling's not played great in this game. Fatty does have a little bit of an injury, but I am going to bring on Fatty in this match. Mason Mount's been poor too. Enzo Fernandez, on you come. Ansu Fatty is carrying a little bit of a knock, but he is a player who typically in these games this season where we've needed to make something happen has stepped up. And in spite of his injury, I, I need him to be the man to do it here. I say that. There's only 15 minutes left. I'm going to get shouty shouty. I thought having scored, the floodgates would open. Chances would just come here there and everywhere. It's not really how it's played out, unfortunately, for us. I'm going to move Chilwell and James forward here. Fernandez, you can go forward now as a sentiment on attack. Casado, just stay back. 
I'm going for this game here. It might be naive. It might be stupid. We really need a win. Okay, how much added time is there going to be? Six minutes. Is anything going to happen? Please, football manager, make something happen. Nothing's happening. The time's running away. It's going to finish here 2-2. Two, two. They had that sending off. They created nothing in the second half. Statistically, we were the better team. And yet we share the spoils. And as a result of that, you can see here, we continue to trail Aston Villa by one point. Only silver lining if there is one. It does give us an extra point over Manchester United who are yet to play. Apparently Ten Hag is looking at Reese James and Raheem Sterling. Uh, they're, they're not for sale. So if, if he wants to leave me alone, that would be nice or I will get a restraining order. Okay, I am going to hit continue here to see what happens in the Manchester United game. They're away from home against Liverpool. Liverpool, if you want to do me a favour, that would be dandy. They have done me a favour. Scott McTominay, suck it. I've not got over the fact he scored against me to make it 3-3 earlier on in the year. Oh, we've had another cash injection, another £4 million. Do you reckon he's just going to put £4 million in every week now to stop us going into receivership? Not sure that's going to work as a long-term strategy, but yeah... I mean, Todd, you do you. So things are firmly in the balance right now when it comes to the Premier League standings and our assurances of Champions League football. The last two games of the year really, really are going to matter. Tomorrow, we are going to do the end of season live. We have Fulham. We have Newcastle. We'll have all the end of season shebang after that, including finding out potentially about the financial future of this club. Either way, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and are continuing to enjoy the series. Looking forward to the conclusion of season one tomorrow. Hopefully I see you guys for it. As always, leave a like if you enjoyed this one. See you again next time. It's me, Jack. Same time and place tomorrow. Cool. I'm out.